Uh, our next speaker I would like to invite is uh, Professor Alma Melando. Uh, she uh, received her PhD from uh, in higher education from Boston College. Uh, and uh, her supervisor, it seems, was Philip G. Uh, Elt Betak, who is uh, a very, very uh, prominent uh, uh, scholar in this field. She served as assistant professor in the Center for Study of Higher Education at the University of Arizona, USA, till 20, uh, 2009. And since 2010, she is the researcher at the Department of Educational uh, research for the Center of Research and Advanced Studies in Mexico. She is also uh, an author uh, of numerous articles and books on higher education in Mexico and in other countries. Uh, she is also the editor of uh, education blog called Distancia por Timo Timpos. Uh, <laughs> so I would like to invite Dr. Alma Masendo Maldendo, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Amba. I, yeah. I really I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing the names correctly. Well, uh, this yeah. happens also uh, to us regarding your last name, so I think we are yes. even yes. here. Yeah. But thank you very much for the kind invitation and, and for this introduction. Thank you very much to Camelia uh, for uh, inviting me to this panel. I truly appreciate this opportunity to talk uh, uh, in this panel about this very important topic between Asian and Latin American colleagues. And also I appreciate that most of us are women. Um, and that's, that's also nice, a nice discussion. And I would like to talk about three main issues um, and taking the opportunity to, to put some ideas here regarding migration and the, and the current situation of the pandemic. First of all, let me say that um, universities in general, as we know, they are very ancient and they have a long history, but universities have survived at least nine major pandemics um, along um, their history. So this is only one more. Um, it's not the, the, the pandemic, the most lethal pandemic actually that we have survived and we hope we will find a solution regarding this pandemic. But universities has a long, uh, have a long history. And I think this is one of these crises where we need to redefine and rethink about um, our major issues. I agree with uh, Maria Amelia about what, what this represents in terms of facing new challenges for universities. And I will uh, like to start with one example um, um, here. First of all, universities are international. This is another characteristic that we know about universities since uh, their creation. By definition, they are international. Um, so, but there, there are several discussions that at least uh, in my case, I tried to avoid for a long period of time regarding internationalization and universities. And one has to do with what is an international student. And for a long time, I, I, I didn't want to really address the debate on to what extent an international student can be an online student. And I think this is the moment where we have to redefine this and we need to discuss again. Because um, in, my, in my opinion and given my training, I also studied in the US and I was a professor in the US and, and so on. Uh, international student, one main component has to do with um, moving geographically to another country and have the experience and live the experience. And, and obviously the European Union came to redefine what was an international student because they also define it by domestic, non-domestic. I mean, there were all these different terms to define international student. But in terms of online students, that was more difficult always because we were saying, well, 
it is not exactly an international student if they don't have the experience. But now that we all suddenly, we all became online professors, online students, I think it's a good moment to reconsider this definition and to rethink what is the way we are um, um, defining this. Uh, and this is just one example. The other, of course, has to do with migration. I mean, this pandemic has um, 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 implied different challenges regarding migration. And I will use two quick examples um, in terms of, of the time. One is the recent debate in the US regarding um, um, the migration and regarding this um, issue on if you are not taking classes at the campus, you won't be considered an international student or you, you, or you will lose your uh, rights as an international student and you have to be deported. This is one thing and, and obviously uh, the issue uh, was solved uh, fortunately in the US in terms of uh, allowing them to take online classes. But I will put you the other example in the case of Mexico. Here we are discussing that if you are not in the country, you are not allowed to receive the national scholarships as an international student because you have to be in the country. And this is an, again, the, the other side of the debate, but it has a lot of implications in terms of migration and the meaning of a, and the rights of international students. Um, another issue that we need to discuss is what is going to be happening with the most vulnerable students in this context. And obviously, Maria Amelia uh, mentioned it, several situations in Latin America that we are facing here in terms of uh, inequities, the gaps uh, in terms of access to technology. I mean, these are issues that developing countries are facing, and we all are facing this situation. The sub-minister of higher education in Mexico the other day said that it is ex expected to, to lose at least 8% of the total enrollment of higher education because the pandemic situation. Um, this is probably very optimistic to think about only 8% um, will drop. Uh, but this represents at least three, more than 3,100 students in the case of Mexico that we might miss. So in this context, where is the situation of uh, internationalization and higher education? Well, one of the issues that now we have to discuss uh, in our countries is how relevant is going to uh, be internationalization because uh, in, in a context with all these necessities, with all these problems, obviously the main one being um, health, the health issue, um, internationalization won't be a priority. That's, that's the real situation in a country like Mexico. So the, the big challenge is how can, can we continue putting the topic in the agenda? How can we continue saying, it's still important, um, no matter what is the way we Please are doing. Please conclude. Please conclude. Yes, yes, I, I'm finishing. Um, so how to put this issue, how to become, uh, and how to redefine the way we are saying, still we need to put this in the agenda of the institutions, in the governments, and uh, I, think, I think these issues, uh, together with other like access inequity, quality um, is going to be there. So um, I, I will leave the, the discussion here, but uh, I hope we can, we will have time to continue debating. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yes.
Thank you very much, Professor Maldonado. This was a very interesting uh, presentation in the sense that you just gave the whole picture of uh, uh, Mexico, and uh, this was really uh, interesting. And you know, all of us uh, turning into online teachers and students turning into online students. So where is this whole challenge of uh, you know the opportunity for exposure which international uh, education brings uh, is is uh, have to be seen and how this uh, how the developing countries are going to actually uh, uh, address this issue is also to be seen thank you very much uh, for this and